One of the more common technical errors is inserting the needle at an incorrect angle of insertion. It's all about physics. When we enter the vein at a low angle, as we see here, we have a long breaking distance before we're through the other side of the vein and into underlying structures. This margin for error helps assure a safe and successful venipuncture. However, when we increase that angle and we enter that vein at an excessive angle of insertion, that breaking distance is gone. We have very little margin for error before we're through the underside of the vein and into underlying structures like nerves and arteries. We see on the left a low angle of insertion. It's about 15 degrees. On the right, we see about a 30 degree angle of insertion. Here, we see an excessive angle of insertion of about 45 degrees. When the needle enters the vein at this angle, not only are we risking an unsuccessful venipuncture, but we're also risking involving the delicate underlying structures when we go through the vein. The standards are very clear on the angle of insertion. The Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, or CLSI, says that the angle of insertion should be 30 degrees or less. Now measuring the angle is not necessary, and it is excessive, but suffice it to say that we should perform all venipunctures by entering the needle in as low of an angle as possible. In one case, a patient came to a hospital laboratory's outpatient drawing center for lab work. The phlebotomist attempted to access a vein in the antecubital area twice, inserting the needle both times at a low angle. On the third attempt, the phlebotomist went in at 90 degrees. The needle went through the other side of the vein, into the nerve tissue, and the patient had a permanent nerve injury and sued for damages. The patient received $10,000 in the settlement. 